You all know it's going to be a good day when we start with this guy. He's actually going to hang out at our Airbnb. We're going to do something today that we've never done before. We're boldly going where no man has gone before. Or at least we're going to see the set from it. This should be quite an experience. Days with Jordan the line and you all begins right now. You can fulfill your fantasies by taking your photo in Galileo. <laughs> Very cool. Look, we can get inside. And we are taking a set tour today. Spock, my Vulcan brother. <laughs> And actually, these guys are gonna be here. They're here for this, this weekend. And you actually, I think it was like $400, but you could take the set tour with either Jonathan Frakes or Data. Right there it says, recreated exactly as they were laid out in the Desilu, now Paramount Pictures, stage nine in Hollywood, the original Star Trek, 1966 to 68 run. Sets of the fabulous Starship USS Enterprise, NCC-1701 await guests to step aboard be transported to the world of Star Trek. There's a wax perk and a wax spot. Alright, I got my ticket. Apparently Data had to cancel. Yes, COVID. They have had William Shatner here before. Look at this. Of course, my first time here. So unfortunately, they told me I couldn't film anything. It all had to be through photos, but this was quite a museum. Check out the Gorn. I love that mask. That was great. Then they had all kinds of um, screen used worn clothing. There's Captain Kirk's yellow. Look at all this stuff. It's all very recognizable from the original series. That was actually uh, Spock's from the movie. There's a photo of him wearing it. Then all kinds of the operating instruments from McCoy. And then just tons and tons of props from the show. All original props. All very inexpensively made for the time, but very creative. And there's the Enterprise. There's a great story about how he got that. I'll tell, I'll tell you later when he comes out to give the tour. And of course, some great costuming from the original series. Photos of the people wearing it. That was a great one. Then of course the cubes. And there she is wearing that. The glasses. Oh, I love that episode when they think that guy's been lost for a long time, gone, dead. Then he's building these super people. There's his costume. And the original drawings from it are for it. Then look at all of the gadgets from the different episodes. There's this costume. These were all great. But this next one was Terry Gar, when Terry Gar was on the show in her costume. Kind of amazing they still have that. And then more of the props from the series. <laughs> yeah, Spocks. Even tells, most of them are very detailed and tell what episode they were from. Just some amazing props. His officer's manual. I, I just love seeing how much stuff this guy's been able to collect over time. All of this stuff that he's showing is all original. Of course, like I said, that was Captain Kirk's. Look at the guns. They had to come up, they had 32 episodes in just the first season, so they had to come up with so many different stories and different gadgets, and that, that was one of the big ones. And there's Leonard Nimoy with his son on set. And they have the photo of the guy wearing that costume right there. 
And then these were all things that were sold, merchandised. <laughs> yeah, Spock's record. The board game, the models. More clothes, but this was all from the next generation. In fact, that white one, they have a photo of Picard wearing that one. Right there. I didn't watch any of this stuff, so I'm not as familiar with it. But they had some sketches of some of the things they had. Data's head. These were all original from the different incarnations of the series. Different props. All original stuff, though. Like the prosthetic <laughs> and the photo of him wearing the prosthetic. That's really cool. Then there's one of the helmets. Spock's computer. I thought this was really cool. Look at this. That big computer of his. Then they sold the tribbles. Just barrels of tribbles and they all made noise and wiggled. <laughs> then this was all stuff from the TV series as well. They had some really cool extra stuff like this. Since it was Desilu. They have the stuff that is in this photo right there on display <laughs> from the TV series from I Love Lucy. Same exact ones. And then really cool phaser prop. And then that's the entrance to the tour. Looks like the exterior, he went out of his way to make it feel like you were actually walking onto stage nine at Desilu and this is where I'm waiting to take my tour James is the man giving the tour he actually built all of this he started it in 1996 and he's an Elvis impersonator <laughs> so there he is he doesn't do these very often but we got a two-hour tour with him explaining how he built it and what he knew so he said this it was offered to him during uh, the pandemic and they said if you can come get it in two or three days it's yours so he did <laughs> and he said that this was you know his, his favorite show and he went out of his way to match up everything didn't add anything that wasn't included so we started our tour to see the most accurate original set from star trek there is with a desilu light right there <laughs> So this is the original hallway that we walk into. He shows that there are no ceilings, just like the way they would have filmed it. And he said they recreated everything that they could see in the show. If they couldn't figure out what it was made of, they made it themselves. So we're going into the transporter room and look at this. How freaking cool. <laughs> you can just see Scotty in there working, can't you? This is so neat. He tells us how all of that stuff was made. It's kind of an interesting story. But he said this was actually used in a movie before, years before, and they repurposed it. Just added buttons, made buttons, put things on here like this. And he said for this beaming process, the lights on the ground were actually the uh, lenses from the the lights overhead and they just put them on the ground lit them up then when you stood on them it gave that effect and he said then special effects they would you they filmed an alka-seltzer put it on their stomach and then they filmed that through a tube with glitter and that's how they did the beaming process for the special effect <laughs> wow look at that the magic I just thought you'd like to see all the details. So that would have been the intercom. So it would have, they would have superimposed. You can see on the other ones lit up. They would superimpose someone's image in there. Then we were looking around the room. Just looking at how it was all made. Even the walls that you don't see because they're filming. They created those as well. Now we went out to the main hallway. And they just used the same hallway for all the series and just lit it differently those are the intercoms then we start walking down towards the infirmary and he tells us that he's created the beginning of star trek the next generation he's going to open that next door so here's the first preview of the way it's going to look 
the actual <laughs> inside of the Enterprise. How neat is that? He got the original people that built this and created these graphics to help him do this. And since they were done with like uh, fluorescent light tubing, the way the light would come out of there would look different. So he had they had to create those images with the dimness to recreate that. And they even honor stage nine here in this room. But they put all the graphics. They said they did update them a little bit. They didn't do the exact methods they would have done to light them. They made them more normal now. Now look in here. <laughs> you can just see McCoy examining people in here. That wall you wouldn't have seen. That's where the camera would have been. But they made it. And I'm just going to show you every detail of the room. Pointing to that wall. And he said that's where that pull down bed would have been. But they didn't. Uh, build into here because they wouldn't have room for people to stand for the tour. But that's what the up close gadgetry on the walls was. Just knobs. But he said this does actually incline. Um, they've shown uh, actors that come through, and this is the whole room, the exact dimensions from the show. The desk of McCoy, and then the recuperating room in here. Now he said those sheets they use throughout the whole show and that they have like these weird specks on them and that that was written into the story as though like those silver specks or whatever would read your, your, to make sure you're okay, they would read your body vitals through there. But he said they painstakingly recreated every part of this and they found that some of these things were actually like tuba muff mufflers mutes <laughs> things that were in his office there's the desk and then of course those white arrows he said that was done with film back then now you get a close-up of those sheets where i was talking about those weird specs that they wrote into the story you'll see them everywhere you'll see them in captain kirk sheets everywhere then this was something mccoy had showing how much he hated the old ways, which are like the way we do things now. He he thought they were barbaric. Keeps them as a reminder. And then they said that the, w these were his scalpels. They were actually commissary salt shakers <laughs> from Paramount that they painted a ring around and turned into scalpels. And that wall you wouldn't have seen in the show. That was where the camera was. Intercom. And then we're leaving this room back out into the hallway we're gonna go to, back down the hallway we came like I said they would just relight this different ways and now we're going into the briefing room we would always see them play games but they also repurposed this when they needed it for like the the courtroom and different rooms so he created it with all the games that they would play that we would see them play like the chess and checkers and tic-tac-toe and stuff Spock's three-tiered chessboard. He said the weird thing is that all that stuff that they use was stuff you could buy in stores at the time. They just built it and used it a different way. Like that's the checkerboard. There's the Vulcan loot that Spock plays and they actually built that one. And it works the way it's supposed to. And whenever cast members come they always want to look at that so they have them sign the back of it. thought that was kind of a neat thing so it's not an original prop. But yeah, this was just an amazing recreation, showing all the games and just explaining how they were supposed to work on the show, the the spinning of the top game. This guy did just an amazing, amazing job of this. And he told us history of all this stuff, like the history of the chairs and like these flags. He said they would use the flags during the court scenes. And that the flag was the, uh, you know, it was the Star Trek flag. But then this one was an homage to Desi Arnaz. It was like the Cuban flag. And that was like a precursor to the Star Trek. And then that, he said, was just this like glittery fabric that anytime you like ran your hand across it had this weird motion. So they used that as an effect. Now we're leaving and we're heading off to one of my favorite parts which is in here in McCoy's office with all the crazy skulls and stuff. And they recreated all of this as well. <laughs> he 
He said, the only stuff you don't see is what you can't see on the camera. They built that divider. There's a crazy story behind that, I'll tell you. But yeah, this is exactly it. Except for like two skulls he added. Yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> I mean, this is like unbelievable the uh the amount of detail and the collecting this guy's done he said this particular skull in the episode th it was in paramount's like basement for years and then they found it and used it again for scott bacula's version of star trek it was in those episodes too so they made a recreation of it here for the office i love it <laughs> And then these were like ended up being what are now like our floppy disks. That's a photo of this room. And then he said he found the divider. Turns out it was made out of one inch PVC pipe that they just cut a bunch of and then glued them all together. So that's what he did and painted it. And of course that connects us to the other room. But he said the only two things in here that aren't original to the show are th this skull and another one. Because he bought it from the actual show from Scott Bakula's. And it was in his offices in there. And he thought, hey, it's a real prop. So I, I got to use it here. So it's not original to the original series. But now we're going in and <laughs> look at the laboratory this is amazing. There's some really cool stories in here. He said that that stuff flying through the air, that was just like fake vomit that you could buy through the mail. They used stuff like that and like repainted it. Now that wall, he said that's all repurposed stuff because they used it towards the like the last episode of the original run. They're running out of money. So they found different ways of using stuff. Look at that wall. With that sliding door. Now here he's showing the same thing I just mentioned where they were ahead of their time using something that would basically look like a floppy disk later on. Back back in the mid 60s, 66 or whatever when they made this. So he says the wall behind it with like all the knobs and switches and everything, all that stuff had been used in other episodes. <laughs> like that had been one of the villains um, control board so they repurposed it for in here he said this was where originally Khan was in and they broke out the glass to get him out he said they just repurposed everything they could not knowing what would happen next but he said that he couldn't figure out what they made these out of and then he finally got a hold of the set guy and the guy said oh yeah that was the packing material from the electric typewriters that we were using in the writer's room we just repainted them and put them on the walls <laughs> So that's what he did for those. Then he said this was originally a prop for my favorite Martian. It was like a planter and they put lenses in it, lit it up, used it for one of the villains. And then um, McCoy wanted it and kept it and put it in his lab. And then he said spray bottles. They were using spray bottles because Gene Roddenberry had went to the New York fair or like the 1964 fair, saw these introduced and liked the technology and wanted to use this cutting edge technology for his futuristic show. So that's why they were in there, these like novel spray bottles. And then they don't actually open this door, but that would open in the show. And there's the knobs and switches. <laughs> what a cool room, huh? Now we're going into Captain Kirk's lair, his room. This is just incredible. This place, he, he nailed it. Everything is exactly like the show. Even a few pieces from the show I'll tell you about in here. Yeah, there were a lot of scenes of him in there. Now that was the original one from the show. I'll show you in a photo. But apparently um, William Shatner gifted that to the head of the fan club back in the day. And when he died, he wanted it donated to this museum but it's right there over his shoulder in the original series now this is his sleeping quarters i'm going to give you every angle of this there's a photo kind of matching up that there's his mirror and that is the real mirror from the show yeah you'll see a matchup right here of this 
pulls his meals and everything out of there. But they had a really good boom showing it all right there. And there you can see on the bedding, it's that same weird glittery stuff I told you about. Now this, he said, isn't the one from the show, but it's the identical one. And this, you would see this move up. And so he said, so they made it where it actually moves up. So there, he pushed a button on there. And all of a sudden, it just started moving up. And there was the screen. <laughs> he said, and then you would communicate and it would go back down. He said, everything functions. If there's an alert, then the alert buttons and lights and everything would siren and go off. When the smoke would come out of the vent in that one episode, they made that so that you can push a button and make that happen too. They just went all out. <laughs> and now our tour continues on. And this is where Scotty would go work on the anything wrong in the engineering bay. He would have to climb up that tube, and up that tube was really just a light. They had like two different lights that shine down. But they had like some steps in there that he would crawl up or, or come back down. There, I just had to take advantage of an empty hallway. But yeah, he said anything that you see in there, they saw on the show, and they made those piping and everything themselves. And that, he showed us something secret that he's working on. A new piece of the museum is back beyond there that you guys will see in the next coming months if you come to Ticonderoga. Look at all the buttons. Everything's screen accurate. Now we're going to the last two parts of the tour, and I think the best parts. This takes us into engineering room in here where Scotty is and this is like some of the most memorable scenes of course right there you gotta recognize that if you know the show <laughs> he said everything like can be walked on they they don't want people to like touch it or anything because they want to preserve it but it's all usable they filmed a fan movie in this place Yeah, they got all the desks and everything accurate. And then this, of course, there's that famous shot of when Scotty is <laughs> clinging for life there. So he was recreating that. I was just amazed by the detail of this whole place. And then here he told fans they could recreate the Scotty pose right there. Right before he said, this is what you've all been waiting for. Let's go to the bridge. So we walked down to the bridge. I was super excited. <laughs> Beyond excited. And he even opened it the same way they did with a pulley and a string. That's how they did it for the filming. To make those doors slide open. He does it that exact same way for the tours. Ah, the bridge of the Enterprise. Even recre recreated the walls we don't see. There's Captain Kirk's chair. That's where Sulu would sit. I gotta tell you, I mean, I was blown away. He said it's exactly 38 feet, just like the way the original Desi Lu set was, which was a big set for that time. That's the chair. Not the real chair from the show, but he said that is the exact model they used and built it off the one that Paul Allen has. This is just incredible, right? <laughs> That's where Spock would have sat and worked. And then he tells us, hey, you guys are going to be able to get to sit down in Captain Kirk's chair and I'll explain everything about the desk. So he says that they never slid the chairs back. They always picked them up to move them because the way they were made. And that black piece actually was like a, a slip that you could take on and off. See, right there. He said those same chairs were orange on the Brady Bunch. 
you could find the same ones at the dinner table, but they just put this little slip over it to make it look kind of futuristic. Then he said everything up here that Sulu would have used worked. All the sounds work, all the gadgets work, they light up, they move the way they're supposed to. Screen accurate, how cool is that? I really thought this guy was just amazing. He really had an amazing passion for this. And loved telling people about it too. There's me sitting in the chair, <laughs> pondering. And there's Spock's area, so I had to go over and take a photo of my Spock head with that. <laughs> I love Spock in this show, so. And then this is what Captain Kirk would have seen from his seat. Right there where Sulu was sitting. And he said that was actually, I believe, like a piece of planetary equipment that actually did move and work and everything that they used for the show. And then I noticed, hey, I never turned around and looked at the door we came in, saw the the placard up here, and I was like, oh, that is so cool. I'm so glad I saw that right at the end. San Francisco, yep. And then I just thought I would end it with uh, looking at Captain Kirk's chair and how cool that was that they were able to get the actual same chair that they made this out of and turn it into a replica. It's perfect. And he's cool enough to let people sit in it. And that's the doorway that took us back out into this awesome place, into this museum, this labor of love. And I realized when I came out here, I didn't notice, but those were Captain Kirk's medals. And I asked, and they said, yeah, those are the actual ones. So Captain Kirk's medals from the original Star Trek series. Well, my friends, I'm sorry I wasn't allowed to film anything inside. They said that was something contractual with Paramount. They don't allow any filming of that tour. But I hope you enjoyed what I narrated for you and what I told you that I learned from it. You're ever in Ticonderoga. This place is a must-see. They not only have this set, but they're working on the next generation, and they're hoping to do all of them. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night. And goodbye. Goodbye, let's make